Hi everyone, I'm Sister Mary Elizabeth from Seas of the World Community and I would like to welcome all of you that are joining us this Tuesday, February 1st, so the very first day of the month of February. And we will read 2 Samuel, first reading is 2 Samuel chapter 18 verses 9 to 10, then we go to verse 14, skip to verse 24 to 26, and we end with verse... And then we go to verse 30 and we end with chapter 19, verse 3. Responsorial Psalm today, Psalm 86, 86. And the Gospel is from St. Mark, chapter 5, verses 21 to 43. Let's start the reading of the Word of God. Absalom happened to meet the servants of David. Absalom was riding on his mule, and his mule went under the thick branches of a great oak. His head caught fast in the oak, and he was left hanging between heaven and earth, while the mule that was under him went on. A man saw it and told Joab, and I saw Absalom hanging on an oak. Joab took three spears in his hand and thrust them into the heart of Absalom. Now, David was sitting between the two gates. The sentinel went up to the roof of the gate by the wall, and when he looked up, he saw a man running alone. The sentinel shouted and told the king. The king said, If he is alone, there are tidings in his mouth. He kept coming and drew near. Then the sentinel saw another messenger running. The king saw The king said to the first messenger, Turn aside and stand there. So he turned aside and stood still. Then the Cushite came, and the Cushite said, Good tidings for my lord the king, for the Lord has vindicated you this day, delivering you from the power of all who rose up who rouse up against you. The king said to the Cushite, It is well with the young man Absalom? The Cushite answered, May the enemies of my lord the king and all who rise up to you to do harm and all who rise up to do you harm be like that young man. The king was deeply moved and went up to the chamber over the gate and wept. And as he went, he said, O oh, my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, what I had died instead of you, O oh, Absalom, my son, my son. It was so to Joab, the king's weeping and mourning for Absalom. So the victory that day was turned into mourning for all the troops, and the troops heard that day, the king is grieving for his son. The troops stole in, into the city that day as soldiers still and who are ashamed, and they f when they flee in battle. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So the son, David's son, Absalom, that was trying to kill him to become king, now is dead. He was dead by one of David's soldiers, Joab. So he is dead. And David continues to be king. And David are very grief. David are very sad for his son who died. Again, David was very humble. He could not even feel anger for his son who was trying to kill him. He loved his son. The only thing that mattered to David was the love that he had for his son. Doesn't matter if his son was out of his mind trying to kill his own father to become a king. He loved his son. And for him, he wasn't, he didn't rejoice because his, the threat of his life was now no more. No, he was sad. He was very sad, he was grieving for, grieving, for his son was not with him anymore. So David, a great king, not only for the love of God, but for love of others. He understood that everything that was happening around him, there was a reason. And he always tried to save people that he loved. Remember Saul, Jonathan. He loved them, and he, even if he was accused, especially by Saul, he did not ever want to kill Saul. So David is a great 
king because of his love of others and his love of God. The responsorial psalm, Psalm 86 says, Incline your ear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Preserve my life, for I am devoted to you. Save your ser servant who trusts in you. You are my God. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for to you I cry all day long. Gladden the soul of your servant, for you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving, abounding in steadfast love, to all who call on you. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. Listen to my cry of supplication. And the Gospel from St. Mark, chapter 5, verses 21 to 43 says, When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus came, and he saw him, fell at his feet, and begged him repeatedly, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, so that she may be made well and live. So Jesus went with him, and the large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had, who had been suffering from hemorrhages for twelve years. She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all she had, and she was no better but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came out came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak for she said if i but touch his clothes i will be made well immediately her hemorrhage stopped and she fell she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease immediately aware that that power had gone forth from him jesus turned about in the crowd and said who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you. How can you say who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While Jesus was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, Jesus saw a commotion people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, Why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha cum, which means little girl got up and immediately the girl got up and began to walk about she was 12 years of age at this at this they were overcome with amazement jesus strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat the word of the lord thanks be to god the gospel today a miracle Jesus resurrecting, Jesus curing this little girl. When he says, Talitha, come, little girl, get up. He gave her life. He gave her his life. He gave her a new life. Jesus made this miracle to this family because the faith he saw in this little girl's father. This man who asked Jesus for a miracle, who asked him, my little girl is sick, my little girl is in a point of death, please save us. 
this man had faith in Jesus. And when we have faith in Jesus, when, he, when we show faith, that we show that we believe him no matter what, he, he does a miracle for us. He will do a miracle that we need. Let's trust our Lord today. Let's trust that He is with us. Let's trust that His will will be done in our life and that His will is the best for us. Amen.